at our We haven't been given exactly a survival rate, but we have been told that the fraction that remains after t hours is e to the negative 0.4 t. When I think about this survival rate here then, that means that my survival rate is the fraction that's left after t hours, or rather my, um, let me rephrase that, but yeah, my survival rate is the fraction that's left after t hours. Well, that fraction that's left would be like saying a over a naught, if that's my initial amount. That's our fraction left. And we know that that was equal to e to the negative 0.4 t. Putting that into this formula up here, um, the other thing that we're gonna need to know is the renewal rate. And because it says that our rate we're being asked for the rate for the drug to be administered at a constant rate. So in this particular case, we need to replace our rate with a constant. And I was going to go ahead and call that K because we're told that it's a constant rate. Now there's one more critical piece of information in this problem. We're being asked at what constant rate, so I know this is our final answer, is going to be what does K equal? Should the drug be administered to maintain a steady level of the drug in the bloodstream? Well, if we're going to maintain a steady level of the drug in the bloodstream, then whatever level of the drug we started with, that should be the level of the drug when we measure it T hours later. So this amount that we're going to have left in the drug stream should be whatever our initial amount that we put in is. That means that this whole thing is going to end up looking like A sub zero is equal to our survival rate times P naught, so E to the negative 0.4 T, times our initial amount is a naught plus now we're integrating from zero to t and s of big t minus little t is going to look like e to the negative 0 0.4 big t minus little t and we're going to use that k for that constant rate Now comes the fun. We get to integrate this thing. Um, yeah, so I've got a naught equals e to the negative 0.4 t times a naught. This piece in here, I can pull that k out in front. And 0 to t e to the negative 0 0.4 big t minus little t dt. This is an exponential, but in order to integrate it, I'm having a little bit of trouble wrapping my head around the u substitution without writing it out. So I'm going to actually take the time to write out the u substitution to integrate this. I wish I was in a classroom with a giant amount of blackboard or whiteboard or anything to write right now, but we are stuck with my tiny board, which isn't even that tiny. Okay, 
for my u substitution, I'm going to let everything up there in that exponent be equal to u. And if u is negative 0.4, I'm going to go ahead and distribute that in. So I'll have negative 0.4 big T plus 0.4 little t. When I take that derivative, I only care about it with respect to little t because that's the variable in my integral, which means du is equal to 0.4 dt. The other thing that we might as well practice is switching those limits of integration. Because I'm doing a u substitution, I want to make sure when t equals 0, u would end up being I replace the t with 0, I'll have negative 0 0.4 big T. And when t equals big T, that would make u 0. And I think that's actually easiest to see up here, that if I plug in the big T, big T minus big T was going to be 0. Making that swap on the u substitution over here, I'm going to move that a naught in front. So I've got a naught e to the negative 0.4t plus k. And now my bounds for integration, I have to keep them in the same place. So 0 is at the bottom, which means negative 0.4t is what's going in my bottom spot now. When we plugged in t, we got 0. And I've got e to the u, du. Integrating that, I'm going to end up with k e to the u evaluated from negative 0.4t to 0, or k e to the 0 minus k e to the negative 0.4t. I need to make myself some room down here at the bottom and take a minute to go, wait, what were we looking for? So what this question has asked us, if I go back to the actual words in the problem, we have been asked at what constant rate? So in terms of the variables, we've got left in this problem, what we're trying to isolate and get by itself is k. I've got two k terms over here on the right hand side and no k terms on the left hand side of my equals. So I'm going to keep these k's over here but factor them out. And then I'm going to take this piece without a k and move it to the left. I end up with a naught minus a naught e to the negative 0.4 t is equal, and I'll factor that k out, I have made a mistake. I caught my own mistake because I worked this problem out earlier today. Did anyone else catch my mistake? It happened when I did the use substitution. Back up here in our u substitution, du is equal to 0.4 dt, but I didn't actually take care of that 0.4. When we substituted this back in, that du should have gone in as a du divided by 0.4. I'm going to go ahead and just stick that point 0.4 out under the k out here and follow that through. So this k would be divided by point 0.4 and okay now we are big this k also needs to be divided by 0.4. Okay. 
Now I'm feeling better. Now it's matching what I had earlier today. I've got a naught minus a naught e to the negative 0.4 t is equal to, and now on this side I'm going to factor out k divided by 0.4 or 0.4, and I'll have 1 because e to the 0 is 1. I'll have 1 minus e to the negative 0.4 t. At first, I got here and I was thinking, this doesn't look like it's very helpful. But then I noticed that on the left-hand side, I could actually factor that A naught out as well. And if I factored the A naught out from both of these terms, then these terms match meaning that I can divide both sides by that and be left with something pretty simplified that a naught is equal to k divided by 0 0.4 or that k is equal to 0 0.4 a naught. 